Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Revolution 250 podcast. I am Bob Allison. I chair the Rev 250 Advisory Group. We're a consortium of about 70 organizations in Massachusetts planning ways to commemorate the beginnings of American independence. And our guest today is Philip Hamilton, who is a professor of history at Christopher Newport University in Virginia, historian of the Revolution and early Republic. And he is the author of a number of books on the Revolution. Uh, the Making and Unmaking of a Revolutionary Family about the Tuckers of Virginia. He's also written a history of Christopher Newport University. And we are here to talk about his most recent book, The Revolutionary War, Lives and Letters of Lucy and Henry Knott. Phil, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. It's it's an honor to be here. I, I love your, your podcast, and um, I'm delighted to be here today. Well, thank you. I loved your book. I mean, it's great to have Lucy and Henry presented in this way. So, you know, let's talk about these letters and how you got into writing a book about the Knoxes based on their fascinating correspondence. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm currently uh, researching and writing a, a larger biography of, of Henry Knox. And but as I as I read as, during my research, as I read the letters between Knox and his wife Lucy. I was just struck by uh, by their accessibility, by their you know. It seemed as if they're they're writing in the 21st century. It, they're you know they touch upon so many interesting facets of life. Not only the American Revolution, but they they touch upon their love. They touch upon their interests. They they you know and and you know letter writing was such a, was the only way in which they could express themselves. When they were apart, and, and they were apart a lot during the American Revolution, that's for sure. And so, so I did want to uh, uh, present. Uh, you know, I wanted them to tell the story uh, themselves, and you know what they experienced during the war. And 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 so I'm I'm delighted at, at the positive response that I've gotten from the book. Yeah, they really are. They both emerge as three-dimensional characters in this, and they're very young when they meet and when they get married. Yeah, yeah. When the revolution begins, uh, Lucy was just eighteen, and Henry was was twenty-four, and you know they're they were the same age as as the students in my classes, and 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 so I used this book in my 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 American Revolution class, and the students love it because. You know they can really relate to the same emotions that that Lucy and Henry were were going through of missing a loved one, um, the excitement of a newfound love, and then then uh, the fear that they might not ever be together again, especially as Henry went off on on campaigns. Uh, and so so again, they they just touch upon so many um, relatable uh, facets of their lives. Uh, you know. And, and it didn't matter if they lived in the 18th century or the 21st century. And then Lucy really is. When Henry goes off to war, she really is isolated because her entire family had disowned her. And they, in fact, had been disowned by the place where they grew up. What, can we talk a little bit about her background? And yeah, yeah. Lucy was from uh, a loyalist family. Her, her father uh, was Thomas Flucker. Uh, he was the royal secretary of Massachusetts. Uh, which made him the third ranking crown official uh, and he was a staunch st staunch patriot uh, and 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 when Lucy and Henry began to court court one another uh, uh, Thomas was not at all happy with this and and he had to be persuaded uh, to to permit the marriage to go forward and then uh, he and his wife Hannah Flucker they they refused to attend the, the ceremony um, but 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 nevertheless, they did accede to the to the marriage. But when the revolution broke out, and when uh, Henry and Lucy escaped from Boston shortly after Lexington and Concord, uh, they broke off all contact with with them, uh, and and that was devastating because you know Lucy was I mean she was still a teenager, and and you know and then she's you know she misses her husband who's off on dangerous missions, and she misses her family. She. She wrote to her family during the siege of Boston, and they never responded uh, to her, and that was so painful. Mm -hmm. It was so painful, especially uh, because during the siege of Boston, Lucy became pregnant with her first mm -hmm. child, uh, 
uh, and and there is Henry off to Ticonderoga, right. getting the guns, and then busy with the siege when he did return. Mm -hmm. And and so you can imagine the emotional turmoil that that she she underwent uh, mm -hmm. during that that opening during the opening stages of the war. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, she's moved out of Boston and he has her in a safe place where she wouldn't have known anyone like Worcester or what. Yeah. Yeah. She was at, at Worcester uh, throughout the first part of the siege. Yeah. And then when he went off to Ticonderoga, uh, he brought her to Watertown mm -hmm. uh, a little bit closer. Uh, but still, you know, she, you know, she uh, still felt very, very isolated. And, mm -hmm. and, and that was such a painful time for her. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What kind of, a, I mean, what can we tell us, what do we know about Lucy as a person? What do we learn from the letters about her that might surprise us? Yeah, well, she's she is certainly uh, a, a strong-willed woman, um, and and that comes across from her, her first letters uh, onward. Uh, she she obviously was very well educated. Uh, she she knew quite a bit about literature. Um, we don't know much about her her. her the details of her, her education, but it was clearly very good, uh, and and she she could discuss a number of different subjects. So she was, you know, very interesting. I think that's what made her so interesting to Henry because he was uh, interested in so many uh, different subjects. And 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 so, but she she was uh, a very ambitious woman, uh, as was Henry, uh, and so they were a, a, a terrific match with. For, for one another. In many respects, they were very much alike, uh, mm -hmm. but there were enough differences to, to keep each other intrigued uh, throughout right. their entire lives, throughout their entire marriage. But doesn't she um, kind, of, kind of court him or by... Yeah, yes. and initially, yeah, yeah, that was uh, uh, a remark made by a cousin uh, that, that, you know, she, she was fascinated by him as soon as she met him. She met him I believe in 1772, she met him in Henry's bookstore in Boston, mm -hmm. uh, and 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 this cousin said that you know she seemed to, you know, court him at first, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, however, I I don't think it took much effort on her to catch Henry. Uh, I think he was equally fascinated uh, by by her, but I think her her courtship, uh, her courtship habits uh, illustrate her her determination to get what she. Mm -hmm what she wanted. Uh, and, yeah. and she did persuade her very reluctant father to, to at least permit the, the marriage to go forward mm -hmm. uh, in 1774. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, so uh, but she, you know, she wanted to, have, she always wanted to have her way. And, yeah. Yeah. and, and during the revolution, so frequently she could not. Right. And, and so, so sometimes occasionally she comes across as, as petty in the letters. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, you know, especially during long periods of separation, right? Uh, for instance, yeah. during the New York, New Jersey campaign, right. and then yeah. during the, uh, the Philadelphia campaign. But, but I think you have to put her, her, her words into a broader context. You know, again, mm -hmm. as I was saying before, she was abandoned by her family, yeah. which continued to be very painful. Mm -hmm. uh, after her first daughter was born, she, she was basically a single parent. Yeah. Uh, raising her 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 child, uh, mm -hmm. and and so she had a lot a lot on her plate to deal mm -hmm. with, and so it's it's it was very human of her to to yeah. to complain uh, to Henry and to want to be with him, right? Yeah, and we can understand that and her isolation, and then her husband is off doing all kinds of things, but why isn't he spending time with her? I mean, he also feels that pull these two duties he has to Lucy and to his country. And that's, I think, very much a challenge. Yeah, yeah. And that that was, I, th I think those are some of the most fascinating letters when they're arguing, when Lucy wants him to leave the army. Uh, mm -hmm. This came up in, in 1777, in particular at the end of the Philadelphia campaign. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and Henry shuts her down on, mm -hmm. on that on that front. He says, you know, you've, you've written words that will will be forever painful uh, to me. Uh, and and I just ask you never to bring this up again. Uh, and mm -hmm. and I and but he does pledge to her at toward the end of this letter that that you know the rest of uh, his life after the war will be dedicated to her mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and and to her desires. And and I have to say that 
you know, he did live up to to that that promise, mm-hmm. uh, and and you know, he he was very very dedicated to her after the war, mm-hmm. uh, and and that comes across in their many fewer surviving letters after the war. Right. That, well, they're together uh, after the war, so they. Yes, indeed. So, yeah. and they they were also together later on in the war. Um, yeah. You know, after the the Monmouth campaign, they were, um, you know, when the the nature of the war for the Continental right. Army shifted. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they were together much of the time. So there are many fewer letters, mm-hmm. um, you know, unfor- unfortunately for, yeah. for we historians, uh, yeah. but but nevertheless, uh, uh, they they very much appreciated being together toward the end right. of the war. Right, yeah, we're talking with Phil Hamilton from Christopher Newport University, and he has written the Revolutionary War Letter, Lives and Letters of Lucy and Henry Knox, which is a, Fascinating book, and you have a lot of great scenes in the book. I mean, his description to in a letter to Lucy of the uh, Battle of Trenton is really a terrific recapitulation of what happened. But then you also have this scene in July of 1776 when they are having breakfast in New York, at the and finally they are together, and then they see the British fleet coming into New York Harbor. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Yeah, that that was that was uh, a fascinating uh, series of letters, uh, and and yeah, that was uh, Lucy joined Henry in New York in May of 1776 mm-hmm. as the Americans were waiting for the British to finally show up, and 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 Henry knew that Lucy should have left because you know she had her they had their daughter with them uh, who was about five months old at that point mm-hmm. in time. Uh, and and Henry had purchased a carriage uh, beforehand in June to mm-hmm. you know in case yeah. uh, the British did come and she had to make mm-hmm. a hasty escape. Um, and and even though uh, scouts had sighted the British fleet uh, and and he did urge her to to leave him, uh, she refused. Uh, mm-hmm. And and he put up with it. So so mm-hmm. on the morning uh, of July first. Uh, 1776 as the british fleet was coming through the new york narrows uh and they see this this massive fleet Mm -hmm. come coming upon them they thought they were it looked as if they were about to uh, launch an amphibious invasion of lower manhattan um fortunately for all concerned they the british they they uh, attacked Mm -hmm. to the uh uh, to the uh to the left and and landed at staten island but Mm -hmm. henry didn't know that and so when they were having breakfast together uh, he said he he wrote that he scolded her like a fury, um, mm-hmm. and and I I I argue that I think he was mad at himself for for not exerting his 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 patriarchal will upon her, right, uh, and, and 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 forcing her to leave. Uh, mm-hmm. But but Lucy was in tears when she left, and uh, and and that I believe initiated their first argument, their first series of arguments, which plays mm-hmm. out in their July. Mm-hmm letters to one yeah. Yeah. another. Yeah. Yeah. And no, and 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 Lucy in, in those letters in July, she she kept threatening to come back to the army. Uh, mm. you know, even wow. though the British were encamped, you know, just miles yeah. away. Mm-hmm. Uh, and 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 Henry was saying, you better not come back here. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and so so there this there was this kind of back and forth argument that that went on for about three weeks. Mm. And wow. they finally did make up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fortunately. And yeah. <laughs> now, now, one of the things we know about Washington, he seemed to be a very good judge of character and talent. And Henry Knox is someone who impresses Washington almost immediately when he meets him. Mm-hmm. And then Washington also had a good relationship with Lucy the time she was in camp. And uh, can we talk a little bit more about Lucy and what George and Martha and? Yeah, yeah. The I mean, they they all got along with one another. Um, I think you know Lucy's reading because she was, uh, a, you know, from an elite family, mm-hmm. and and she knew how to comport herself uh, mm-hmm. in in refined company, and and that was the Washingtons, uh, right. and 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 so because they came from a similar class, mm-hmm. uh, I, I believe that's one of the reasons why Lucy and and Martha got along so so yeah. very well. Uh, and and you know and they shared the same interest in their children, uh, mm-hmm. and 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 so I, so I, I believe they just kind of hit it off. Lucy, yeah. I mean Lucy and and Martha did. 
Um, but but Henry and and Washington got along splendidly as well, mm -hmm. uh, and and you know for you know fortuitously, Henry met Washington on July fifth, uh, mm -hmm. seventeen seventy five, just yes. three days after he had arrived at, at Cambridge, mm -hmm. uh, and 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 you know Washington was was taking his his measure of the men whom he had assumed command of, mm -hmm. and he realized he needed. Uh, you know, young men of of talent, and and yes. Washington did have an eye for 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 talent, yeah, yeah. and so he immediately, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I think he marked yeah. uh, Knox for for promotion uh, right. after their first meeting, and because Knox yeah. was invited to uh, headquarters at Cambridge just mm -hmm. four days after that that um, mm -hmm. that chance encounter, yeah. Uh, yeah. and so. And and from there on in, you know, for the next twenty years, they were, uh, they were, you know, almost tied at the hip. Yeah, he really was Washington's right hand, and was some. And to be honest, most of the men Washington met when he first came to New England did not impress him, but Knox mm -hmm. certainly did. Yeah, yeah, and Knox. I mean, he, you know, even though he he came from uh, a, a tradesman background, his mm -hmm. father was. Uh, a mariner and a ship ship captain who who went bankrupt when mm -hmm. when Knox was a little boy, mm -hmm. uh, and and left the family, abandoned the family. Um, you know, even though Knox's background was was not of the best, Knox knew mm -hmm. how to to comport himself, and and I mentioned yeah. earlier that he was very ambitious, uh, and he knew how to impress men of, of mm -hmm. wealth. Mm -hmm. He knew, yeah. and 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 so. Uh, so he was very, very good at, at, mm -hmm. at that. And, and so these two men just struck it off, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. hit it off right at the beginning. I think it's more than just trying to impress Washington. Washington was impressed with the work he had done in building this fort. He saw here someone yeah. who understood fortifications. Yeah. Oh, oh, that that's certainly that. I mean, you know, Knox's talent uh, yeah. uh, came out and and his talent in, in military engineering and, mm -hmm. and his talent. In, his talent for for artillery, uh, mm -hmm. and so so yeah yeah no it was it was a combination of factors yeah. that that made Knox so attractive to Washington. Yeah. yeah, and then of course Lucy and Martha go to Mount Vernon when they're on their way to Yorktown. It's fascinating reading the letters as Henry doesn't really know where it is they are going or what the plan is, and then mm -hmm. suddenly they were shifting down to the Chesapeake and. Um, Lucy goes along with Martha to yeah Martha. yeah yeah and 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 that's a fascinating story because uh, Henry uh, was very worried about Lucy because uh, he had gotten a letter from uh, Lucy's brother uh, uh, stating that that their father was was gravely ill in London mm -hmm. and was not expected to to survive mm -hmm. uh, and again Lucy had not heard anything from her family for the past you know, six years now. Mm -hmm. And and so, but she was pregnant again. Mm -hmm. uh, and and so Lucy was worried about her, her physical health because she, she did have difficult pregnancies. I think it was a bit worried about her mental health, mm -hmm. um, you know, given the fact that her father was, you know, clearly at, at death's door. Uh, and and so he, he went to Washington, I believe, and asked if, if Lucy could accompany him uh, to Virginia on this Virginia campaign, and 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 Washington graciously uh, invited Lucy to, to Mount Vernon to stay mm -hmm. with, with uh, Martha Washington during the campaign. And I think that illustrates uh, the closeness of 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 the couples uh, mm -hmm. during throughout the Revolutionary War, mm -hmm. and 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 I think that continued on during the you know during Washington's presidency. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're talking with Phil Hamilton from Christopher Newport University, author of The Revolutionary War, Lives and Letters of Lucy and Henry Knox, as well as other books. One thing that did surprise me as I was reading the book was that um, Lucy's family had extensive property holdings. And then, of course, as loyalists, they're going to forfeit all of that. But somehow she was able to transfer the title of some of the land to mm -hmm. her husband, who is of unquestionable loyalty to Massachusetts and the United States as opposed mm -hmm. to the crown. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about how that happens and what happens with the family land. Yeah, yeah, the the, the so-called the Waldo patent, uh, right. um, 
Samuel Waldo was was Lucy's grandfather, uh, mm -hmm. and and he 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 had gained control of this massive uh, 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 grant of land in central Maine uh, along the coast of Maine, uh, and and Lucy's father and mother owned three fifths of that this massive. Mm -hmm. It was thirty miles long and I think about six miles deep, mm -hmm. uh, and and so so. Um, now, Thomas Flucker and, and his wife did develop this land a bit mm -hmm. uh, in the period right before the American Revolution, but but it was basically undeveloped uh, mm -hmm. land. But nevertheless, they did have extensive properties in Boston as well as those those land holdings. Uh, and and during the war, as the Massachusetts legislature began to look for new ways to fund the war, mm -hmm. uh, they began to look toward loyalist right. properties. Uh, and 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 Henry did use his position to uh, uh, to, to lobby, uh, for instance, the Massachusetts legislature to to um, at least get uh, Lucy's mother's uh, property, uh, and, and 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 then Henry uh, he did through you know, uh, through negotiations with the uh, you know, with the uh, with the legislature. Uh, he did eventually get get all of the Waldo mm -hmm. patent uh, uh, for for himself and for Lucy, and that that's where they spent the the final decade of Henry's mm -hmm. life uh, in in there developing those mm -hmm. plans. Um, uh, and and it might have I you know I it might have been better had had Henry not gotten those lands because uh, mm -hmm. he did uh, toward the end of his life he was financially badly overextended. Right. Uh, yeah. And, and so. So he, you know, but but nevertheless, he he did, um, you know, he was following a, a you know, a, a trajectory in his life that that Washington had followed. You know, right. Land land speculation was the the mm -hmm. name of the game in the 18th century, and and Henry pursued that uh, mm -hmm. uh, greatly. But but he did uh, use his position uh, to 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 secure those those lands, and mm -hmm. and and you know, if you if you look at his arguments. Uh, now those aren't contained in the book, but if you look at his arguments, you know about the sacrifices that Lucy and he had made toward mm -hmm. the revolutionary cause, it, it makes sense that that, oh, yeah. uh, that the legislature did accede to their their wishes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And of course, her family had been worried that he was after her money when they were courting. Yeah. Yes. Uh, during the the Revolutionary War, there was a letter that um, uh, Lucy wrote to Henry about them transferring the the one of the the fluckers houses to mm -hmm. to henry's name um and 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 because the massachusetts legislature was was you know making mm -hmm. noise about seizing loyalist property and 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 lucy did point out that you know the family might not look so friendly upon that but she did assure henry that uh you know if they knew the full situation they, right. they would agree with that um, uh, but, and, and, you know, Lucy and, and her, her family did reconnect after the war, but that was, that was almost perfunctory. I, I think mm -hmm. they did mind that, that Henry did get the, the property and did benefit right. from yeah. the property. Um, you know, the, the post-war contacts between Lucy and her family members were, were all about the properties. Really? Uh, they wanted them back and, mm -hmm. and, and, and Henry, you know, he did devote enormous energy uh to 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 securing those properties for for them uh, mm -hmm. at least portions of them for for the, the family but it um but the family never re really reconnected because no. of their disputes over property i would argue that's it do they do the members of the family come back after the revolution no 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 lucy never sees her her parents mm -hmm. um nor her her siblings uh ever again Mm -hmm. uh, and so they they did come into count they they did meet um uh lucy's brother's wife uh their mm -hmm. you know, lucy's sister-in-law uh, she did come back and and henry uh you know cared he, he made sure that their children got um uh, uh you know were, were educated uh, mm -hmm. and 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 so so henry did show affection toward at least that side of the family mm -hmm. I see. How many children did Lucy and Henry have? Uh, they had uh, thirteen. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it, she she went. She experienced thirteen pregnancies, mm -hmm. uh, and 
un, un, you know, tragically, only three of them uh, survived to to adulthood. Mm -hmm. Um, wow. And so that that was a reality uh, that they experienced during the Revolutionary War. Uh, mm -hmm. Two of their children did die during the Revolutionary mm -hmm. War, uh, and 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 for one of those deaths, Henry was away on an operation. And mm -hmm. and they're very very compelling letters when uh, this was a three month old baby, Julia, mm -hmm. uh, when she died. Mm -hmm. You know, Henry, you know, was so distraught that not only about the death of their little girl, but that he could not be there to comfort. Uh, mm. Lucy, uh, and and you know throughout their the re remainder of their lives, they they just lost child after child, and, uh, yeah. and so and I think that brought them closer together, um, mm -hmm. and you know because they both felt so so very deeply with the loss of each each little baby. Mm. I can imagine what a sad, what a tragic thing this. And then there's the episode when she and is inoculated for smallpox along with the baby, but apparently mm -hmm. the baby had already contracted it before the inoculation. Yeah, yeah, that that's that's a, a fascinating series of, of, of letters. Uh, this came in the spring of 1777. Um, mm -hmm. Lucy had had Lucy was fearful of of the smallpox inoculation, mm -hmm. which makes sense to mm -hmm. to us, yeah. Um, yeah. and and. She, and Henry had suggested that she get one in 1776, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, before the the beginning of the New York campaign, you know, people thought it was going to be still thought and hoped it would be a short war. But right. uh, by 1777, illusions of a short war had had been mm -hmm. shattered, uh, mm -hmm. and so so Lucy decided to to undergo a smallpox inoculation so that she could be with her husband uh, more freely. Um, Henry, I, I believe he caught smallpox as a as a as a he's a young boy in Boston mm -hmm. uh, because he never he he was never vulnerable to the disease, yeah. uh, but but Lucy was and and so she and her daughter had the inoculation mm -hmm. uh, and at at first everything looked like it was progressing well. Uh, Lucy was in a military hospital in Brookline, mm -hmm. uh, Massachusetts, and 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 then. Uh, after about a week or so, uh, uh, little Lucy, that was their daughter, mm -hmm. uh, uh, showed some, the signs that she had gotten uh, smallpox naturally several days before mm -hmm. her inoculation. And, mm -hmm. and she got a very, very severe case of it. Uh, and, and, and it looked as if she, she might die from that mm -hmm. smallpox inoculation. And, and, and Lucy was, was devastated. She said, this poor little girl, she mm -hmm. sat motionless for, uh, mm -hmm. for, you know, for three days, her, mm -hmm. her body is covered with, uh, mm -hmm. smallpox, uh, uh, pustules. And, and, and fortunately, uh, uh, their little girl did survive. And she mm -hmm. was one of the, the three children that did survive to adulthood, mm -hmm. but, but nevertheless, it was, it was, you know, such a stressful, um, and painful experience for her. Mm. Uh, and, and, you know, and that was, but that was one of Lucy's decisions to, to, you know, endure the war mm. uh, and to, to, you know, to face what was coming uh, because she realized that not only would it be a long war, but it would be a, a very, very different war. The future would look very, very different than the past. And mm. that was a reality that they, they had to put up with. And mm -hmm. so, so the smallpox inoculation was one of the signs that Lucy was coming to terms uh, with the, the changed circumstances that the war brought about. Mm -hmm. we, we're talking with Phil Hamilton, author of The Revolutionary War Lives and Letters of Lucy and Henry Knox. He's also a work on a full length biography of Henry Knox. And Lucy does play such a big role in his life uh, that um, it's really, there are, well, we can see Martha Washington, Abigail Adams, that this really is a partnership. And she is someone who has very strong ideas, as you said. And, mm -hmm. um, can we talk a little bit more about then what their, how their children then are educated? I mean, some of them are with her as she's alone, and then some are in the camp or somewhere else. What's their mm -hmm. education like? Uh, she seems to be better. Henry, we know, spent some time at Boston Latin School, but didn't finish. And Lucy, they're, they're, they are, though, both very bright people. And then what about their children? Their children were, were educated by, by tutors uh, initially. Uh, and and the, 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 
the the female members of the the, the family uh, they were always educated by tutors. I, I, mm -hmm. I've never found any records where they were uh, sent to 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 a, a, a school outside. Um, but but uh, they, their only surviving son, uh, who was Henry Jackson Knox, mm -hmm. um, he was uh, he was educated at a, a a school at Boston, but then. Um, Henry Jackson uh, Knox proved to be Henry's son proved to be a very severe disappointment, uh, mm -hmm. and and never really pursued his uh, his educational opportunities at all, uh, mm -hmm. and 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 he died pretty much a wastrel, uh, and mm -hmm. you know although he did reform a bit after after Henry uh, Henry Knox had had passed away, mm -hmm. but he was a severe disappointment uh, to them. And, and and but none of his children seem to have that that same kind of drive mm -hmm. uh, for for knowledge that craving for knowledge that, mm -hmm. that Henry had uh, as a, a bookseller. You know, Henry mm -hmm. was basically yeah. an autodidact. He he, mm -hmm. he he consumed books and 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 he not only consumed them but he remembered what he read right. and, and he yeah. he applied what he he read. Um, and and I think that that Lucy was was the same. So. So education mm -hmm. yeah. was a disappointment for 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 mm -hmm. for their, you know, their their children's education proved to mm -hmm. be a disappointment yeah. in in terms of how those children mm -hmm. access those opportunities. Mm -hmm. What about Henry's brother? Can we? What more do we know about him? Yeah, his his brother uh, William Knox is is uh, he he has a fascinating story of, mm -hmm. of his own, but but William Knox was. Uh, Henry's only surviving brother. Henry mm -hmm. had came from a family of ten boys. Wow! Uh, and and you know, death being an everyday reality mm -hmm. in Henry mm -hmm. Knox's life, uh, only his brother and him survived. Wow! Uh, uh, two of his brothers uh, uh, were were mariners, and both of them were were lost at sea. Mm -hmm. uh, and and so it was basically uh, uh, William and and Henry, you know, kind of and Lucy also confronting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, the world on their own during the Revolutionary War, uh, but uh, William Knox he did show signs of mental illness mm -hmm. uh, early on in the war. Uh, uh, he he uh, happened to meet Henry on the road to Ticonderoga. They mm -hmm. uh, William Knox was coming uh, back from New York, I believe, uh, and he he met Henry on the road, mm -hmm. and, and Henry kind of teased his brother, and his brother, uh, you know was so embarrassed by, by Henry's teasing uh, that he threatened to kill himself uh, oh then and there with a dagger that he had. Mm -hmm. and, and Knox wrote to Lucy that, you know, took considerable persuasion to, to stop that. Mm -hmm. and, and But then he recovered and he did help uh, and he accompanied Knox on, yeah. the, on the Ticonderoga expedition and proved mm -hmm. invaluable. Uh, mm -hmm. to, to Knox, but but he would have these periodic mental breakdowns. You know, mm -hmm. for instance, uh, after the war in 1785, uh, he he had another mental breakdown, and mm -hmm. he thought that uh, he and and one of Henry Lawrence's uh, daughters were engaged to one another, and wow. and he and he showed up at the Lawrence's household because Lawrence happened to be in in London at the time. Uh, and with a pistol saying that, you know, he would burn down the house if, if, if you know, she didn't marry him. Uh, and, and, and Knox, you know, operating from uh, uh, Philadelphia at mm -hmm. the time or, or, or New York, but uh, Knox had to, you know, contact, uh, you know, mental health doctors in, in London and, and got his brother uh, out of, of that situation. Uh, and, and so, uh, it was it was William uh, Knox is is a fascinating person himself, mm -hmm. um, uh, but the relationship between these two brothers is is also a fascinating aspect mm -hmm. of of their lives, and and it's it's one that uh, is is you know really not explored that into any detail. Um, I mean the relationship you know in general among historians yeah. between brothers I think is mm -hmm. is, is pretty much ignored. Uh, yeah. by, by historians, but this mm -hmm. is a fascinating uh, relationship that they had with one another. And and Henry was always very tolerant and very understanding mm -hmm. of his brother, uh, in spite of the embarrassments that, that he caused uh, Henry. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, but that that love that they they mm-hmm. developed as as young boys, kind of thrown right. on, you know, thrown, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, onto the fates when right. the father abandoned them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe yeah. that that just fostered a, a very a, mm-hmm. a deep, deep closeness between them. Mm-hmm. It really does. We're talking with Phil Hamilton, author of The Revolutionary War Lives and Letters of Lucy and Henry Knox. And we can see, as you've been talking, why this story is so compelling for undergraduates who then, because these are three dimensional people who are dealing with, yeah, the Revolutionary War, but then also many of the same things our students deal with. And it makes them real people and understanding that this they're not plaster saints, that uh, Henry and Lucy are real people doing things and making really important choices. Right. Yes. They, 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 they have their virtues and they have their vices like, right. like we all do. That's right. Uh, yeah. And, and, and I think that makes them so relatable mm-hmm. uh, to 21st century uh, people in general. Uh, but, but, you know, given their young ages during the revolutionary war, I think that's what really appeals to, um, you know, college age students. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you've written about a Virginia family in the Revolution. I'm wondering what brought you to the story of Henry Knox. Yeah, that that um, uh, that came through a relationship that I, I, I a long term relationship that I've had with uh, Louis Lehrman. Okay. Uh, and and I, 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 I worked for um, Lou Lehrman before prior to uh, uh, deciding to go back into to history when I it was mm-hmm. Soon after I graduated from college, wasn't sure what I was going to do. So I got this job with uh, Lou Lehrman, who was a, a New York City businessman. Right. Uh, and and I worked for him for a couple of years. Then I decided to go back into to history. Uh, and, and, and Lou subsequently created the Gilder Lehrman uh, right. uh, uh, Institute. Uh, and, and they also have the Gilder Lehrman Collection. And, mm-hmm. and shortly after... Uh, uh, the, the collection obtained the, the Knox papers. Um, Lou contacted me and said, why don't you come up to, to New York uh, City and, and have a look? And, and I was just fascinated. I knew who Henry okay. Knox was before, uh, but you know, Lou said that you know, this, this archive has really never been fully tapped yeah. Uh, yeah. And, 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 and really mined for, for all that it contains, especially the Knox papers. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, and the Knox papers can be a challenge uh, simply because Henry Knox's handwriting uh, is, mm-hmm. is, is, is pretty wretched. <laughs> I mean, I have to, yeah. I have to admit. Yeah. Uh, and, and so it, it has taken, um, you know, that's one of the reasons why this project is, is stretched on for so long mm-hmm. is, is because I'm having to decipher. Uh, and some of my students have, have had mm-hmm. to decipher uh, his his handwriting mm-hmm. and 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 so it's it's kind of a slow slow process mm-hmm. but but it's also taking a while to to get this bi- biography out because Henry Knox did so much and he wrote so oh, much right. yeah and just mastering yeah. his 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 correspondence is is a bit of a challenge in and of mm-hmm. itself but but I've loved this project every step mm-hmm. of the way I, I I I really find Knox to be a fascinating person. And, and he's really representative of this age, um, mm-hmm. you know, which, you know, as we were discussing before, is like our age in many respects, but it was also a very, very different mm-hmm. age in many respects. And, 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 you know, Knox embodies both aspects of, of, mm-hmm. uh, of life in the 18th century as well as the 21st century. We, we've been talking with Phil Hamilton, professor of history at Christopher Newport University, author of The Revolutionary War Lives and Letters of Lucy and Henry Knox, as well as other books. And now we're looking forward to the Knox biography, which you know, we're knocking on wood that it will be ready in time for, if not um, Dorchester Heights, then Yorktown or... Um, <laughs> Yorktown, certainly. I hope so. <laughs> And it's amazing that, you know, there weren't that many officers who were with the army throughout the war. And Knox, and Nathaniel Green, and Washington are there at the Siege of Boston. And then with the British evacuate New York, and Green, of course, is in the Carolinas. But there's such an interesting story that he remains um, throughout the war. And what a great thing to have the letters and then to have you doing this book, bringing them to life. 
Yeah, yeah, he really was Washington's right hand man. Knox was uh, yeah. throughout the war because he they he was always at Washington's side. Uh, yeah, you know, really from the siege of Boston to to you know the end of this to when the British evacuate New York. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So thank you. Um, I want to thank you and I want to thank Jonathan Lane, our producer and our listeners all around the country, actually all around the world. And if you are in one of these places, send Jonathan Lane an email, jlane at revolution250.org, and he'll send you some of our Revolution 250 gear. And so this week, folks in Woburn, Massachusetts, Sacramento, Long Beach, Detroit, New Orleans, Newport News. That might actually be you in Newport News tuning in. Right? <laughs> it is. That's uh, where I am. Uh, New Smyrna Beach, uh, San Miguel de Allende in Mexico, and Kailua Kona in Hawaii, and in all places between and beyond. Thanks for joining us, and now we will be piped out on the road to Boston.